silver is disappearing and it's estimated by 2028 the the earth will have primarily run out of at least economically mineable silver reserves that's coming from a branch of the u.s government mexico and peru traditionally the biggest silver uh miners in the world they're running out of silver the world is running out of silver at the same time it is being massively accumulated by the big money and the trolls out there saying oh bullshit i can find it it's cheap it's everywhere it's really a weird situation and it's almost schizophrenic according to the u.s geological survey world silver mine production decreased by six percent in 2020 to an estimated 25,000 tons, principally as a result of reduced production from mines in China, Mexico, and Peru, primarily owing to shutdowns in the first half of the year in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020, U.S. mines produced approximately 1,000 tons of silver, with an estimated $670 million. Silver was made at four silver mines and as a byproduct or co-product from 33 domestic base and precious metal operations. According to some estimates, the total amount of silver mined throughout history is around 1.6 million metric tons. In terms of current production levels, global silver mine production in 2020 was approximately 25,000 metric tons. The world is rapidly encroaching on an already extremely constrained economic environment. At current rates, it's estimated that by 2028, the Earth will have entirely run out of economically mineable silver reserves. Andy Schechtman emphasizes that this is a significant concern as Mexico and Peru, traditionally two of the world's largest silver miners, are also running out of silver. Andy highlights the paradoxical situation in which many people believe silver is abundant and inexpensive despite the impending silver scarcity. He characterizes this situation as nearly schizophrenic, with the mainstream narrative frequently diverting the public's focus from the true silver supply and demand trends. This trend may continue until one day people wake up and wonder where all the silver has gone. He believes that central banks, commercial banks, and producers will accumulate the remaining silver. Andy highlights that those holding gold and silver are typically strong hands who have weathered market volatility and counterintuitive rhetoric. The apparent lack of mainstream interest in gold and silver may have been deliberately cultivated, making it challenging for the general public to recognize the value of owning these precious metals. We will now bring you clips from Andy Schechtman's interview with Arcadia Economics. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. I got a report just yesterday, last night, that silver is disappearing and it's estimated by 2028, the, the earth will have primarily run out of at least economically mineable silver reserves. That's coming from a branch of the US government um, the Geological Survey Committee or whatever their name is, but you got the branch of the U.S. government saying that by 2028 to 2030, we are very cl close to exhausting economically viable um, mineable resources. And, and that's because it's found very near the surface in a form called epithermal, like your skin is epidermis. The big deposits were found, found long time ago. They're saying Mexico will lead the charge in that. Uh, Mexico and Peru, traditionally the biggest silver uh, miners in the world, they're running out of silver. Um, you know, I guess the power of the word, the power of 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 the media, um, rhetoric, and price, they are misdirecting the public to such a massive degree as the biggest money in the world is pickpocketing what is left either above ground or in the ground. And this is a trend that I think... Again, we can use the term logarithmic decay, little by little by little by little, then bang, people wake up and say, where the hell is all the silver? And guess who's going to have it all? The central banks, the commercial banks, the producers, all of it. The people who are holding gold right now and silver right now, by and large, are strong hands, as strong as they can possibly be. They have weathered the storm of volatility. They have weathered the storm of counterintuitive rhetoric. And they've listened to people like yourself who have explained eloquently the fundamentals, the rationale, and you know what it what the market has done to to your question, to your point, what you're hedging at is that the mainstream has no idea. And they've done a good job of keeping the mainstream disinterested. But by this point, if you've been holding gold and silver for the last several years, or as long as I have, or as long as you have, you understand what's happening. And if you are 
paying attention to what's happening on a geopolitical scale, um, it becomes easier to trust your gut and to have strong fingertips. And so, no, we see very little in the way of selling. Um, if anything, we see people trading gold to silver, if you want to call that selling gold. But we don't see anything in the way of people selling gold and silver, very, very little anyway, and repositioning into other asset classes, perhaps to use it for things they've planned. Uh, other than that, no, it is a very, very, very small part of the industry right now. And and rightfully so. I mean, this is the time it should be accumulated at a time when risks around globally, um, geopolitically, economically have never been more important. And quite to the contrary, I, I sometimes wonder what the hell the mainstream is thinking. And then I say, well, you know, they have done a pretty damn good job of suppressing the reasons to own it, to making it very difficult to see from the mainstream. And if you don't spend time looking at alternative media sources like yourself, most people would walk right by it and wouldn't see it. And, and that's by design. And by the time people wake up uh, to the reason to own gold and silver, not only will the majority of it all be have been gobbled up by from the top on down, but just like we saw in Tanzania this last week, they have started to buy their local gold to bolster its foreign reserves. So you're going to see nationalization on a lot of on a lot of levels. According to Andy, the strain that the economy is currently experiencing due to the existing interest rate levels would intensify if rates were to increase further. As interest rates have surged, inflation has tumbled from its peak of 9.1 percent in June 2022 to 3.7 percent. Yet the unemployment rate at a still low 3.8 percent has barely budged since March 2022, when the Fed began imposing 11 rate hikes at the fastest pace in decades. The head of the European Central Bank said Monday that interest rates will stay high enough to restrict business activity for as long as necessary to beat back inflation. This situation could lead to a recession or even a depression affecting the public, corporations, individuals, and the government. Andy discusses the concept of bail-ins, emphasizing that many people are unfamiliar with this term. When the public becomes aware of the implications of a bail-in, where deposits over a certain limit are used to bail out a struggling bank, panic could ensue. This, in turn, could impact interest rates as individuals withdraw their funds from banks and shift them into other assets, such as treasury securities or hard assets like gold and silver. Rates will continue to go higher, whether it be um, well, there's a myriad of factors that could push rates higher, but I do believe you will continue to see rates go higher. Um, and 7%, I don't think is out of the question. In fact, I think it's the only way to even begin to address inflation. You have to push the rate of, of, of return commensurate with the rate of inflation, of inflation or higher, or you'll never address it. So in any case, yeah, I think Jamie's right. Uh, and I think the market is now prepared for it. The strain that we've seen at these levels, it will cripple the banks. It will create a recession, a massive recession, if not depression, where all of the the, the public, the corporations, the, the individuals, uh, even the government has been incentivized into taking on more debt than they otherwise should have. And the maintenance of debt as rates continue to rise, when you go from zero to 7% and or, or to five and a half or wherever, you know, you're talking about in whichever instrument you're talking about, like the, the three month treasury from 0.06 to over 5% in the span of a year, you are going to put some strain on the system that you incentivize to take on copious amounts of debt at the lowest interest rates in, in human history and to raise them as rapidly as you have, even if they haven't gone high enough to really deal with inflation. Um, you're going to create some cracks. You push it up further and further and further. And this is what begets the banking crisis, where all of these banks begin to implode. And all it takes is one to implode and bail in the way the law says. And the public will wake up. Here's a test for all of you out there that know what bail-ins are. Spend today asking two people if they know what a bail-in is. And I guarantee you, you will find the majority of the people that you ask or, or if they're honest with themselves, have no idea what a bail-in is. And wait until they see what that means when everything over the FDIC limit is, is used to bail in 
the bank. It's gone. I don't care if it's a business with five million in operating capital. You're going to get back two hundred fifty thousand, and the rest is gone. Wait and see the panic that ensues then, uh, and watch what happens to interest rates as everyone runs to the bank to get their money out put it directly into treasuries or into hard assets or whatever the hell they do. The act of doing that will force these banks to, to sell their assets that are right now not marked to market, that are unrealized. The act of doing that not only pillages and plunders the bank into insolvency, but it pushes interest rates up even higher as they're forced to sell those, those toxic bonds. This act of selling them pushes rates up higher in the secondary market. After years of the lowest interest rates suppressed by the Fed ever and throwing all of this money on top of it, incentivizing everyone to go out and spend and borrow. The party will go on forever. And, and not only that, having all of these banks go out with, with zero in the way of reserves, they were told they didn't need them, go out and put all of your, your assets that you have to back your deposit liabilities against into treasuries. And the majority of those banks, I don't know, 60, 70, 80%, employed no interest rate hedging. So you have all of these banks with unrealized losses that amount to, I don't know, some people, the Fed will say 600 billion, other people say 2 trillion. Whatever the number, real number is, these unrealized losses, the higher the rates go, and the more downgrades we see by Moody's and S&P, um, the worse this is going to get. And just wait till the first one goes and is bailed in and people realize that's the crazy thing is that people have no idea what's coming down the pike. And it's like the table is set. Everyone's in debt, more so than ever, trillion in credit card debt, 17 trillion in household debt, lowest level of savings, 65% paycheck to paycheck, 45% over 100 grand paycheck to paycheck. No unity in this country. And bang, watch what happens when the table is set. And um, I just hope people wake up. I hope I hope you and I connect with one person on this video today that can go out and help another person and open your eyes. And this isn't about selling gold and silver. This isn't about being a capitalist. This is about being a patriot and things are changing. And, and if you don't see it, if you only look at the numbers or the price and don't lift up the hood and see what's happening underneath and see that there's a, a decrepit squirrel with one tooth running on a wheel after a, a carrot to run the car, um, doesn't even know his name or who he's married to, uh, I, I will simply tell you that you're missing the big picture. And it will be one of these things where you'll look back and say, oh, I can't believe I didn't realize. I mean, look at all those one, two, three, four, all little by little by little. By, and then bang, you get slapped in the face by a realization and you have no way to protect yourself. Despite current beliefs in its abundance and affordability, the global dynamics of silver supply and demand will likely transform significantly. How do mainstream narratives influence public perception of precious metals like silver? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.